Let's see if the surprise anybody shows up. Twenty people watching. Oh, there you go. People are saying what up and hey. <laughs> well, hello to all of you. So, does anybody have any questions for Paul? Want to say anything to him? So, what are we doing here today, Paul? We were going to do some pruning, but it's raining and it's windy. And it's pretty windy. But uh, how's your health? My health is great. I don't, I don't walk well, but I have really good health. I'm really thankful. So good, never to, never to be sick. Um, best growing conditions for asparagus. Well, you, you um, I, I just plant the asparagus in the ground and cover the wood chips. They do great, and I'm even growing them, you know, in shady places. They're doing okay, so. I think they're much easier to grow than they, than they tell you, but you know, good soil really helps. Uh, someone's asking about your pinhole glasses. How long did it take them to correct your vision? Well, it's constant. It's like an exercise. It's like you, you know, you, when you use your muscles, they get stronger. And see, what they do is they force your eyes to focus. And so I use them every night when I read. Whenever I read, I put them on because it's just a constant exercise. So it's you know, my, and my my vision is twenty twenty. It's been great. Um, used to be 2060. The person that was asking about best growing conditions for asparagus says they're in California and they have a lot of heat right now. Well, wood chips are great, and the asparagus are really hardy plants because the roots go down, you know, up to 14 feet, and they're just completely um, the heat. So nothing bothers them once they're established; they're good forever. So just initially, you know, keep it well watered, and again, the wood chips will hold moisture. That really helps. So, you know, the more water can get, the better it's going to grow. Do you ever cook lamb's quarters or just eat raw? I like them. I like the lamb's quarters raw. I'm sure they'd be fine steamed, but man, they're good raw. <laughs> what kind of wood chips do you use? Whatever I can get. I think anything works. Everything everything turns back to dirt. And so I, I haven't had a problem with any, any wood chips. Uh, what do you suggest eating when having, I'm going to mess this up, gastroenterology problems and skin problems? Well, so if somebody's having some problems and skin problems, what do you suggest? Well, skin eating? problems is an issue of the body trying to get rid of toxins from inside. They put it out of, you know, on the skin. And so with any problem, it's just eating fresh food, healthy in season, corrects everything. So as much as you can, get nutrient-dense live food in season, and you'll be good from basically all over the world, Hawaii, New Zealand, <laughs> Sweden. Um, where could you find more pinhole glasses? Where did you get yours? I don't know. Um, I just ordered a whole case of them on, on Amazon. Uh, yeah, Amazon, yeah. Amazon? Okay. <laughs> um, should I use wood chips for my raised garden? Well, ideally, you want to take your raised gardens out, and so just knock off the sides and bring wood chips up to that level, and just raise the whole grade. Hmm. Because you know, raised beds just dry out really quick, and they're just they're not beneficial. And so you you want to really get you know, and the wood chips will hold hold moisture very well. Now, why do raised beds dry out? Because they're exposed to air. See, when you get things in the air, air all around it sucks out the water. And maybe some of the heat from the sun hitting like the bricks or the beams or whatever. Well, on it's the just it's air exposure. Yes, okay. you're, you're supposed to air and it, just, and it dries. Um, 
So this person says, hi, Paul, I was inspired by your will story and prayed for mine. I just got my will drill results and got 36 gallons per minute. The average for my neighbors is 13. Uh, or for my 13 neighbors, is about two gallons per minute. Thanks. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Prayer work, works. That is so good. What a, what a wonderful testimony. That, uh, having a good volume of water is such a blessing. This person just started their back to Eden garden this year and got three truckloads of wood chips down. Good. All right. Okay. So this is one that uh, we covered uh, a couple of years ago and um, obviously need to cover again. When do you think Jesus is coming back for his church? Well, I know, I know exactly when he's coming back. I just don't know what, what year. It's going to be on the Feast of Trumpets. I think it's very interesting how, how, you know, it talks about he's coming back with the sound of a trumpet and no one knows what day they are. That's the only um, of the feasts. They know, don't know exactly what day it is. It can be one or two days depending on the alignment of the stars. I think it's very interesting how the wording is. No one knows the day or the hour. And so, but I'm sure it's going to be a feast of trumpets. I don't know. I have no idea what year, but I think it's coming up soon. I don't think it's going to be, on, be going on too much longer. Is there any plant in the garden that wood chips would not be good for? I haven't found anything that wood chips have been a you know. A, and again, it's the whole idea of the it's a, wood chips are covering. They're not really affecting the plant. They're just covering the, and feeding the soil. Favorite peach varieties. Well, I would I like the Alberta. The, the later you know the ones we have here is called frost. It doesn't have any shelf life. I had to get rid of it. Didn't didn't keep. But um, Alberta peach we had in California, that was a good one. And um, I'm, there's probably a whole bunch of good ones out there, but I, I don't know because peaches don't do well. It's not a peach country. This person used uh, Back to Eden to grow uh, peppers outside in Northern Ireland. That's cool. Can cut grass uh, suffocate plants underneath? Well, if you put something you know heavy enough, you can suffocate anything. You know, it's just volume. But cut grass is really a good you know organic material to feed the soil, and it really breaks down quickly. So it's it's a nice asset to you know cover the ground lightly with. I wouldn't you know do it real thick, but just nice light, light cover. So if you take your uh, mowing, take the bag and just kind of shake it out. Yeah, just take your rake and just spread the... it around lightly, you know. And, and again, water because it's, you know you'll see this green you know fluid coming out as compost tea. And that's feeding the soil in your plants. So it's really good. How should I prune my three-year-old Concord grapes? Well, you want to prune everything so that, you know, if you're on a trellis, everything's going flat, nothing's crossing over, so things going up and down. You're, just make it, you know, a nice flat cover so everything's exposed to the sun. And I have to prune my grapes a couple times a year because they grow so well. I mean, they really grow a lot. But with any kind of pruning, the whole point is is arrangement. Nothing crossing over, nothing shading, everything having exposure to light. Say uh, the compacted soil that you have on the side of your house and what you used to have out in the orchard and the garden and stuff like that, how long did it take for the wood chips to turn that compacted soil into something you can grow well? It happens immediately and just improves over time. Right away, the, the wood chips start changing that soil below it. But, but it's progressive, and it just gets better and better over time. But if I took wood chips and put it over top of this compacted soil on the side of your house here, it's like brick. I can't mm -hmm. even break it with a you know, stick or if something. If you did it in the fall, I, I think by seed. spring, you could plant in it. Really? So just you don't need a you, you don't need a, again, you just need enough to cover the seed like quarter inch, so it's not, not a lot, and the roots will spread. They won't go deep. They'll just spread out. The roots break part of the soil. Yeah. The heavy result will break into it. Uh, I planted my first fruit trees and wondered if you prune all types of fruit trees the same way. I have an apple, peach, and a plum. Yeah, pruning is arrangement, everything fitting. And so every plant, the pruning principle is the same for anything, whatever it is. And so you want, you know, things to come up and out, you know, and, and you don't want things crossing over or shading. So every part of that tree should have exposure to sunlight. Is that going to be the same way with cherry trees? Because I don't think I've ever seen you prune a cherry tree. Well, the, prune, the cherry tree gets pruned. It's just I got to use a 10 foot ladder because cherry trees aren't dwarf. There's no such thing as a, a small cherry. They get big. And so you have to use a ladder. <laughs> but I, I prune it the same way. Right now, right now, Nick's pruning it for me, which is great. What is the best 
nut tree to plant to get a good harvest within a few years? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, we, where we live, we, we can grow walnuts and, and, and macadamians, not hazelnuts. macadamia, um, hazelnuts, um, but depend on your location, but depend on what types you can grow. You know, like in Texas, you can grow, you know, um, pretty much all of them in this warm. Uh, our uh, nut tree is more of a warmer yes. nut tree. Yeah. Uh-huh. I've been thinking about doing some nut trees. Yeah, walnuts and, and um, the hazelnuts, I mean, the, the um, cobras do water. Okay, I don't understand a lot of this question, but you might. Uh, do you think that we non Jews should only follow Noahide, Noahide laws? Or all the laws given to the Hebrews and later the Jewish people. Well, if you read in Romans, Paul talks about that issue about how we, as a wild olive branch, was grafted in to the natural olive branch. We have everything to do because we're part of the main branch. We've been grafted in, and so I would I keep all the laws. I think God didn't create laws haphazardly; they're, they're beneficial. If you read the Torah, it dealt with hygiene, sterile technique, quarantine, proper diet. I mean, the, the laws are beneficial; they work. They're not nothing's bad about them. Okay. Uh, this person's in Tacoma and will be planting apple trees soon. Is there a variety that is best for pest resistance or disease resistant in this area? Yeah, Liberty is really, really great. It's very you know, nothing nothing bothers it. Freedom's another one. Um I think Chris is a really great apple. It might get a little bit of disease, but it seems to be pretty good. But, you know, disease resistance has more to do with the health of the tree than the, the variety, from my experience. Because when I came, all my trees had disease issues, big time. We don't now, because my soil has improved. And so I think you should focus more on the health of the soil than as much the disease resistance of the trees. There's a new um, uh, apple variety that came out of the Tri-Cities area. And it's selling like just immediately. You put it on the shelves and it's gone. I can't remember what it is, but it's a cross between two different. They came out with a brand new variety. Have you heard about that? They're, they're doing it all the time. It's just constant, you know, because they can. This this one is supposed to um, give it a longer freshness. Shelf I guess. life. Shelf life, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I The wife got some and we sliced them up and I was like, well, let's just see how long this lasts before it gets, you know, you, you, you cut into an apple and after a few minutes you start seeing that brownish. Kind Mine of doesn't. Nut, these things do not. Mine don't at all. Any, any of hours. Them. Cosmic crisp. That's what it is. There's a guy in town that has one for me. Sign away. Yeah, we'll graph it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That would be awesome. And it tastes really good, too. I think it's a cross between a, a Liberty and a Honey Crisp or something. Something like that. Something like that. Cool. Those are, those are good good varieties uh, to cross. <laughs> right to the people's here. Um, I lost. Okay. Is it dangerous to have wood chips against a building such as a house for termites or something? No, because you see, wood chips, termites live in dead wood, dry wood. Wood chips are a composting environment. They won't never live in wood chips. Termites. They have to have dry dead wood, like structures, houses, or dead old stumps. They're not going to live in your wood chips. And and there's a major fire retardant. Wood chips around your house. Now over on my property, over in uh, eastern Washington, where it's desert, if I put a load of wood chips way out in the pasture somewhere in the middle of the summer. There's no moisture, and I mean they dry up pretty quick on the um, top, but down below they probably. But down below, okay. So would the termites or anything be able to would that attract that yeah, dry if it's, if it's, if, top? Yeah, yeah. If it's totally dead, that's where they go into. So if you, so you want to keep it moist, you keep, keep moist. it moist. Okay. Um, The reason uh, this, that other guy did the raised garden beds was that uh, wild animals feel um, treated. I don't know, but they eat up his garden, so he put it raised up a little bit more. Oh, what about it, maybe a, a dog or something? A, a, dog. a good dog. You know, eventually animals are going to climb. They're not going to, you know, they're going to figure out a way to get in there. So a good dog or something to keep the animals out. Maybe a fence or whatever, but. 
raised beds are just really labor intensive, use a ton of water. Is there anything you can do to keep ivy and thistle from going through the wood chips? No, they're hardy. You got to get the roots out. They're really tough. If I don't have a cat, how do I deal with voles? Well, you use traps. I use I I I have a different trap for voles than I do moles, but um, you know, good traps really work well. And you use what Victor traps? I use a Victor trap for the moles and and a, the old um. Uh, rabbit trap is the um, scissor type for the bolt holes. What's nice about the wood chips is it really works well because they make little trails in your wood chips and you just hollow off that space in, in the trail, set the trap, they come cruising through and I get them all the time. <laughs> this guy could be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry about the video quality. We have uh, a slower internet right now. Straw and wood chips, or just straw? Well, wood chips last longer, I, and I think they, they have more of the fungal, you know, fungi, fungi type qualities than, than straw does. So I prefer wood chips over, over straw myself. You need to loosen the ground before planting seeds. Yeah, you have to. You have, you have to have. You know, the ground has to have some per permeability. You know, for roots to go into. So you want to. Um, but don't do. Don't go deep. Just take a rake and just get a because you just. Plant and seize a quarter inch, and the roots will eventually break break it up, and it'll spread into the fine stuff. They won't, you know, be bothered with the hard thing. So definitely no tilling, no tilling. or getting big tines no. in there and twisting. No, I them. don't. Again, disturbing of the soil is really counterproductive, and it doesn't last. It doesn't doesn't stay undisturbed. It compacts again. Um, I think I already asked this, but I'm not sure how to prune my three year old Concord grapes. Yes, just you want to prune things open. You know, want to have them on a, on a trellis, on a, on a, you know, just make sure nothing's crossing over, and just make sure everything has exposure to light. So basically, the same way that you do prune trees. Yeah. You, know? It, you know, pruning the principle is is simple. It relates to every, I prune everything the same. I actually think. Um, I might have a video. Uh, somewhere in there of you pruning. You did it when I did my grapes. Yeah, I I it was do. interesting because 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 I was I was coming to this friend of mine in, in Connecticut named Karina. I says, Karina, look what I'm doing. And her story was amazing. She had grapes for like 14 years and they never produced anything. And when she saw what I did, she pruned the next year. She got like I can I can 140 pounds. <laughs> it was incredible. The difference. It was so amazing. <laughs> okay, but that would have been what like. Four years yeah, ago, it was a while something ago. like yeah. that. So look back further if you can. Um, how do you prune citrus the same way? Yeah, everything the same. It's just it's all about you know things have to have light and air. When things get too crowded, they don't do well. You know, and so citrus is very dense, and so you got to really open that tree up. You know? And you can, it's okay, because it grows back. Uh, again, how do you keep squirrels and other critters away from your fruits and vegetables? Have a dog, but it doesn't seem to help. As and get a, get a good dog, like a Labrador, or a dog that actually feels like it's an alpha, and this is my property, you don't belong here. Those work well. Uh, they're saying that uh, they found a way around the dog's work schedule. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to get a dog that acts like this is my property, and you're not welcome here. Um, can you give an experience word with blackberries? Blackberries like so much... The wood chips, they're creating suckers and spreading everywhere. Is it okay to clean out with my pruning to shade? Yes, always. I mean, anything that wood chips are going to simulate any growth, and so you always want to control it. So I just I just uproot my blackberries and spread out of the space I want them. Get rid of them and give, give starts to friends. Can I put blueberries into my clay soil immediately or wait a couple of years for the wood chips to break down? I put them down past fall, wondering because I've seen this a lot about them not liking clay soils. Well, all my blues, blueberries are growing in clay soil. They're thriving. And again, just the wood chips are changing at all. The, the blueberries is like a, like a, um, the roots are very much like a, a rhododendron, a very fine and very surface. And so when you create a healthy environment above, they'll rise into that surface and start spreading out. They won't go deep into your plate. What was the, there was a study or something that was done with maybe trees. 
And one of them, they there's like three different ways they yes, plant. Yes, Washington State University did this study. It was very interesting. They had a heavy clay soil area to plant in. They did three trees. The first, they dug out all the soil and brought in a really nice sandy loam tassel and planted the tree. The second one, they amended the soil with all kinds of wood, you know wood shavings and and those. And the third one, they planted right in the compacted clay soil and put a cover in the wood chips over it. In three years, they went and examined the trees. The first two did grow at all and produce nothing. The third one thrived. And what they found was the first two, they created a clay pot. That water went through that fine material, hit that hard pan where it couldn't get out and the roots rotted because it couldn't get out. You, you created a clay pot. You know, and, and so basically you're, when you do that kind of you're lying to the tree, as soon as they get out of that stuff and hit the real real world and saying, you lied to me. This is not where I live. And so my sense is you want to plant them in existing soil and change it from the wood chips on top and just let it survive because this is home. You can't change that. So this is just tell them this is where we're going to live. I'm doing my best to make it nice for you, but adapt. <laughs> <laughs> By having the wood chips on top. On top, yeah. And, and by doing, we dug a tree. I, I, I just planted a, 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 um, an Asian pear because I wanted one. So I took a big apple tree out of my orchard, you know, good size established tree. But what amazed me was I took it out almost with a rake. When I planted my trees initially, I had to use a, a, I mean, a bar and a pick to plant them. And I'm down to the ground with a shovel on it, and the soil is totally soft and blank, and I was black, and I was totally blown out of how my soil has changed. These forty years of the wood chips, it's amazing. People still talking about the cosmic crisp apple. I guess you can only get that in Washington. Yeah, there's what Daryl's. Um, I, I do my my tours starting in the first of um, June all the way until the end of September, every Sunday. Arvin Kim, the best time to try my apples is when they're ripe. That's it's usually after September. Any tips on pollination and stimulations that work best? I heard insects. Or I we heard on Insects Hotel that almost, or, but also that flowers to grow when and where. So is there anything you can do to help with pollination? Oh yeah, this is absolutely this is a powerful question because I had an experience here a couple of years ago that changed my life. I have I have pears. I've got three pears in my orchard, and I planted one about thirty foot away, a boss pear. It's been there probably like twelve years now. It's a really large tree, but it's never born anything more than like two or three pears a year at most, and some years done. So a couple of years ago, I thought, you know what? I, this is taking up space. I'm going to graft into it varieties can produce because this is not working. So I grafted into it my my clap's favorite. The second year, and like the Holy Spirit was on me, he says. Pay attention. Look at all that bloom. And I watched this thing, totally white flowers. That year, that tree was loaded with pears. And what I got in the spirit was having pollination bee is far more effective than a bee bringing it. Because the wind blew, it spread it everywhere. And what was totally amazing, the side of the tree that the, the graph was on produced heavy, the other side hardly anything. And it was just like, whoa, it was huge. And I'm now making a point to graft into my trees as much as I can because. Grafting into trees, multiple varieties, is the best way to pollinate, period, across the board. And if you don't have bees, you still have fruit, which is wonderful. Why don't you think the Jubilee is representative of the rapture instead of the Feast of Trumpets? Well, well um, if, you, if you look at, again, God's really ordered. And when he came the first time, he fulfilled every single one of the, Jew, of the, of the, of the uh, Lord's fall spring feast. He died on Passover over. He was buried on the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He arose on the Feast of First Fruits, And 50 days later, the Feast of Pentecost, he gave the Holy Spirit. So he fulfilled significantly all the spring feasts. When he comes back, he fulfilled all the fall feasts, the first of which is the Feast of Trumpets, when he comes and returns. The second is Yom Kippur. And I think that's going to happen when, they, when, when that Zechariah talks about when Jesus comes back and all of Israel repents and is saved in one day. I have a sense. That's going to be the Feast of, of um, Yom Kippur. And I think the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the most festive feast of all of them, will be the Mary Supper of the Lamb in Heaven. I just had that sense how it's going to finish. I don't know. That's just my feeling. What apple do you like best, Sweet 16 or Japanese Honey? 
Well, it depends on when they're ripe. People always ask me, what's my favorite apple? I said, the last one I ate because they're all good. <laughs> they're all good and they have qualities that none of them do. And so whenever they show up, they're my favorite. <laughs> if I think I had if I had to have one or the other, I think I'd have the honey crisp because it stores longer. It has really good shelf life. Yeah, this person was binging on uh, videos that I've done with you all day and then we popped up live. You know, we're so all happy. <laughs> okay. They don't want to ask you that blueberry question for a couple days. Let's see. Would you ever try growing avocados in your garden? No, because I, I live in a place where it's very cold and, and avocados are broadleaf evergreen. They don't ever lose their leaves and because it's a broad leaf, when it gets cold, they freeze and die. I remember in California growing up, you know, during the wintertime, you see these smudge pots going all through all the orange and, 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 and you know, citrus orchards and avocado orchards because they knew if it got too cold, the, free, the trees would die. So, you know, um, avocados, I love avocados. I buy them from school. I eat them all the time, but I can't grow them here. And I think you answered this, but I was reading a different thing. I didn't get the answer. When would be the best time to visit for the tours to be able to try all the apples or a lot of them? At the very end, that's the, 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 the later time, the, the, the latter part is when I have most things coming on where you get to really see the abundance, you know, the, the volume of what's growing here. And that would be the end September, of September. September. I used to do it in October, but my problem is, is I want to keep my apples and everybody takes them home. Hmm. And so I've, 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 shut it, I've shut it down in September because I, I have a good walk-in cooler and I like eating apples all year long. <laughs> So I've had a lot of chips down since September of 2018. They're breaking down beautifully, lots of fungus, but I'm not seeing any worms. Is there something I need to do? If you want to see more worms, just put leaves down. Worms are there, they're just deep. They're not on the surface. If you dig down, you'll find them. But if you really want to see a lot of worms, just put leaves down. Leaves are amazing for bringing worms. Grass clippings too. But Leaves, I, 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 they seem to do the, the best. Just, you know, it's just flat leaves, you know, on a, on a space. What about uh, buying some and throwing them in, or a certain type of worm that you would want to add? Well, you can always add them. You know, there's no problem. But, I, but, the, but what I'm finding is, if you create a healthy environment, they show up. They come on their own. Christmas come in later. I prune my apple trees like yours. However, I'm not sure about printing grapes or blackberries. And do you have any tricks for printing grapes or blackberries? Well, again, just arrangement. If you want to th prune things so they're open. They don't, they're not crowded. And so you want to, and again, it's all about shape. Everything is spreading out, having good exposure to sunlight, not, so not crossing back in, crossing over, just up and out and flowing. And again, pruning is an art form. It's not a science. So it's not like, you, you know, rules. It's simply arranging, having everything fit and look nice. Uh, are you still giving tours and what time of the year and when's the best time to visit? I do tours every Sunday from the 1st of June to the end of September, 2.30 till whenever people leave. And then um, right now I've been doing pr pruning demonstrations. People come and watch me prune my trees. Do you still have trees to, uh, besides today's? Do you have I, I still have a few trees left, yeah. So it'll, it'll, we're what the twenty. I'll, I'll probably I'll probably be good through the end end of January. So if you guys still want to come on out for the next week, if Paul yeah, call just give and, me a call and and we can arrange a time. Any ideas about introducing edible mushrooms, shiitake, morel? Uh, is that morel? Morels, uh, oyster, etc., into my wood chip covering. Well, I, I wanted to do that. And so I, I, I harvested some, some morels. I took them by hand and I did this and I threw them. And there was this mass of morels that came up the next year. It was awesome. <laughs> I, just, I mean, it's just, I threw them out in the wood chips, broad, just broadcasting. And a lot, a lot came back. Uh, for grafting, do you use a flat sided shear? I do. It's much, much nicer because it makes, it makes some, you can really do nice edges with it. You know, that's that's all I use that shear for, is just for grafting, because it's not good for pruning, but I use it for, for grafting. Is there a specific one that you use? It's got a little little green, little, little yellow handle. I don't remember the name. Someone gave it to me, and it's just great for grafting, but it's, it has a little yellow handle. It's plastic, but for grafting, it's... I, I know you're specific about your pruning uh, 
clippers. But that's a Falco. Off. My Falco eight, number eight is the finest hand pruner, but it's not great for, for grafting. You know, it's not doesn't come. It's a bypass. So any uh, pruners with a flat side. Yeah, not not, not a bypass. Okay. It's fine for pruners. They also have grafting. <laughs> Cut to the beat. <laughs> Let's see. What's Paul's thoughts on people becoming lazier and not growing gardens? Does he think intensely far farmed fruits and vegetables are contributing to cancer rates going up because of chemicals used? Totally. You know, if you look at look at the human health on the planet, it has never been this bad any time in history, ever. And it's because we're malnutrition, bottom line period. If you're eating nutrient-dense food, you can't get sick. Cancer can't live in an alkaline environment. It's total malnutrition that's causing illness, period. All right. This person says that I've seen you not recommend drip lines and landscaping prep fabric, which is recommended for planting windbreaks. After hearing you, I'm going to try wood chips and sprinklers when needed. Anything else you suggest? Oh, that's good. If you notice, the crater doesn't do drip irrigation. He does, he, does, he does rain. You know, plants take in water through foliage. And a drip irrigation, because the water is only emitted at one place, it doesn't cover the whole area. And so most of your root system is not getting covered. And so it's just really counterproductive. And it's just a waste of time and money as far as I'm concerned. Um, is the back eating method the same as a roof stout method, except use wood chips when she uses hay? It is. It's, a, it's all about covering. It's, it's just exactly the same method used in nature. The ground is covered. And whether you use straw, hay, wood chips, you know, leaves, grass, things, it's really all, all about covering. But you use wood chips rather than straw or hay. Because, because I, I live in a place I have access to them, and I think that they bring in the fungi, which the straw and the wood chips don't, which is really a great medium for soil. And the straw and the hay decomposes quicker? Yeah, they don't last as long. So, like in your orchard, and and wood chips hold water better than, than anything else. If you look at a tree. You know the thing that's really classic. You look at um, sequoia trees out here. And you look at how dark green that foliage is. How does that water get lifted all the way to the top of that tree out the end of the branches without a pump? Think about it. There's a pump, and it's lifting water against gravity. How's that happen? Capillary action in in wood. It's happening in wood fibers. And so pay attention. Wood is design, designed for holding, retaining, and delivering water. Period. It's the most amazing component for doing that. What's the secret on living a good life? Knowing God and paying attention to his owner's manual. The word. It really, it really does it. It gives you everything. It tells you how to live. And knowing God is just the best. He's just there. He's never present help, but ever, ever. He's just really. He's, he's loving. He's good. He gives you wisdom, and he's really there for you. And he answers your questions. And he's just. I don't know. How, you know, I don't know how people live without God. I really wonder because it's just there's so many questions out there that have no answers apart from God. Better to plant one or two apple trees and a couple of pears to help with pollination. And then graft different varieties into each. I might be able to squeeze a couple of dwarf trees into my garden. Yeah, the, the, the beauty of grafting is you never stop adding varieties. That's beautiful. So if you live limited space, grafting will increase your varieties endlessly. It's awesome. Um, kind of answer this one already. Uh, my dad has 10 acres on land, which is in Little Rock, California, high desert. I wanted to show my dad what we can do with wood chips. When would be the best time to visit and see ripe fruit on the trees? And this Late September. Are there any new varieties, fruit or vegetable, that you're going to try this coming year? Next well, week. Question that wasn't Any new varieties you're going to try this year? You doing rice? You doing um new varieties? Not really. Kind of different, like like it'd be different varieties of the same vegetable. Stuff you've already been doing. Yeah, okay. experimenting within the range. Yeah. Um, 
you use pesticides on your apple trees? No, not at all. I don't have pests either. Pests only, pests only attack plants that are dehydrated, stressed, and unhealthy. They never, they never attack healthy plants ever. So when pests show up, it's a warning: your plant's not well. Don't kill the pests because they're there for keep, keeps the healthy the environment healthy. You get you make the tree well, and the pests will leave and go somewhere else to an unhealthy plant. I had to pick half the pears off of the <clears throat> off the tree early last year for fear of the limbs breaking. I pruned it back as much as I dare. Is this going to be a problem? Well, you're that that is good. You know, the, you'll find though as you prune, the wood's going to get thicker and the tree's going to get stronger, and so it's going to be able to hold more. But it's a good idea to take the weight off so you don't break branches because branch branches broken, it's over. You know, it's not going to come. It, 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 and that space is lost, and so it's a good idea to protect your tree from breakage. I remember we did a Q and A <clears throat> on camera one time. I think we're in here. And there was a guy who said he had a cold resistant avocado that he was going to send you or send you cuttings of or something. Did you ever? I've heard, I've heard there's some from Mexico that are you know cold resistant, but to a degree. There's a limit, you know. But there was a guy that was going to send you one or something. Did you ever? Someone, someone did send me some. I gave them away because I just didn't feel. Like, I could probably do them in a greenhouse, but I just don't want to go to that kind of trouble, you know, at this point in my life. And um. You know, but but again, if you if you, if you look at the you know madrona trees here, madronas are broadleaf evergreens, and during the winter they really stress stress. They, the leaves just get really hurt. If you look at rhododendrons, when it gets cold, the leaves curl, mm -hmm. and and they're they're showing you that broadleaf evergreens are really challenged by cold weather. And, you know, the fig is I mean, a avocado, huge broadleaf evergreen. It's just I just you know don't think that it's good. And then if you just go all this trouble, all of a sudden one year you get a cold and kills it. It's just not worth the risk. <laughs> uh, Kathy's having problems with blight. Are there any suggestions on handle handle or avoid it? Well, blight is a it, it, it's a fungi and it's just it, the plant's not well, and so you want to get the plant well. And so any any disease is an indication of poor nutrition. The plant's not well. And so you don't want to go trying to get rid of the blight. You want to get rid of the plant well. So bring in wood chips, water, you put out any infected stuff, get rid of it, and start to bring in a healthy environment. And I'm speaking from experience. When I came here, my trees had powdery mildew. They had leaf curl. They had scab. They had everything. I don't have it now. I didn't do anything to take that away. I just made it improve the environment they're living in. They outgrew it. They became healthy. You see, treating diseases like allopathic medicine does is all you're doing is treating symptoms. You don't ever get rid of the root cause, and you'll be doing it forever. And you'll never solve the problem. So you want to go after the root cause, which is malnutrition, basically. And when you get that well, all the symptoms leave. What variety of plum is in your tree? I have three varieties. Is is a is a um. Uh, my favorite is a, it's a great big called yellow egg, great big yellow one. Then I have a and I have a couple of the um, Italian prune, and I have a, a variety called um, Beauty. And those what I those are what I have. Beauty is a real early one, really nice. Um, uh, the Italian prunes do all those do really well. There's a, there's there's um Stanley, a whole bunch of those do excellent because I'm in a cool climate. And then that that yellow egg is is awesome. It gets huge and it's really good. Very, very, you get wet when you eat it because it's just so full of water. Would you recommend a certain type of wood chip for putting around Japanese maples? They all work. All mm -hmm. the wood chips. I got I got Japanese maple out here with wood chips. You know, in fact, one is a was a problem. They're supposed to be small, and I made the mistake of putting wood chips around it, and it got really huge fast. And it's scaring me because you know. I wanted a small tree, but it's not working. <laughs> if you are chipping up your own cuttings and stuff, is there any benefit to putting that the wood chips from that cutting on that tree? Fine, because that's what nature does. In nature, the, the branches fall to the ground, the leaves fall all to the same place feeding the tree. They're not moved. So it's ideal. So there would there be like more of a benefit for it or not? Because it's I, I don't know. I'm not, sure. the same I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I'm just sure in nature that's how all nature is supported by the by the by the plant. Nothing's imported.
Does Paul have a Victoria plum tree and would he like one? I don't have a Victoria plum. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not aware of it. I've never heard of it. What about mulberry? Would you like one of those? Mulberry. Yeah, we've got one. There's yeah. another plant. Get a plant. Well, how many chickens are you keeping, and do you have issues with predators? I have it. I have. I've had issues with predators, but I have pretty much solved that with a with a good dog. And now, now I have a really nice weeping willow that covers a lot of chicken pen area that can get under under for cover. Um, the the rule of thumb for number is you want to have enough chickens to deal with all, all your yard. Because that's what you, you have to kind of balance it. If you have too many chickens, you got to buy you know food. If you have not enough chickens, you get too much yard waste. And that they don't control it, so you have, you have to, you know, call it out or whatever. And so it's a real balance in, in having the right amount, right number to deal with all of your yard uh, In one of your videos, uh, you said that your daughter had a tumor and you were treating it with healthy foods. Wonder how she's doing. Hope she's cured. It wasn't my daughter. It was it was a woman. My wife was a midwife, and one of her a woman was in 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 a clinic one day, and she was saying that her her sister had a tumor on her chest. She lived in New York. And so I overheard it and I says, you know what? I think I can help her. So I sent her some kombucha, a start, a, a scoby. And she started making it. And she got on national television sharing how that tumor totally shrunk and went away and she was totally well by doing kombucha, which is basically, you know, you're getting all these basic um, B vitamins and, and digestive enzymes, you know, good gut flora that increases your digestion and really Who's your body's, you know, overall health? Uh, going back to pests or something here, it says, are you saying no Japanese beetles or plum circulio? You have zero pest issues? I have none. And if you look in nature, when plants are well hydrated, they're getting plenty of water, no bugs happen. Bugs only attack forests and plants when they're dehydrated, when you have a drought. Just observe nature. It's very amazing what it will teach you. And what, no one's spraying for bugs in nature. What about when you uh, transplanted the uh, celery? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Then you had yeah, and that was shot. and that was and, and what was interesting about it when the celery overcame its transplant shock, all the slugs left, and the, and the celery grew back. And what the Holy Spirit brought to my attention was: Did you notice the celery in your garden was never attacked by the slugs because it never put out a signal? I'm stressed. I'm dehydrated. So that's only show up when when the plants dehydrated or stressed, unhealthy. So if you do have pests, then you have other issues that are causing yeah, that. Something plant. causing, and so the, and so you should look at what's causing the problem. Not the pest is not really a pest. I asked the, the creator about the pest, and he says they're not pests. They're not, they're not police force. I created them to maintain a healthy environment, and their whole job is to take out unhealthy plant material. So if unhealthy plant material could would survive, it eventually become extinct get weaker and weaker and become extinct. And so insects maintain a healthy environment, really. And Paul, you are always mindful of God and what you say. I remember you praising the Israelis, Israelis for creating stimulating artificial seasons in their orchard. And getting multiple harvests in a year isn't that against God's order or nature? I don't know if it's against. It's just it's just multiplying. I was I would say it more multiplies what happens in nature. Apparently, the trees aren't being aren't being you know they're doing well. So that, so that if it was harmful, the trees would indicate this is stressful. I'm not doing well. I'm, I'm phasing out. So apparently, the trees aren't being affected negatively by that refrigeration process, and they're getting you know multiple harvests because that's just a hot climate. I think the plant itself will tell you if it's damaging. And if that's the case, then stop. But if the plant is is overcoming, going with it, then I think it's all right to, to make adjustments to increase production. I, I get a few people from time to time saying, well, uh, like how the wasabi, you're growing it here when it's usually supposed to grow in other places. You grow the... Um, uh, figs here when this isn't a big growing climate, but you're able to do it here. Um, again, here with the Israelis um, doing the multiple um, 
Apple Harvest. Uh, Apple Harvest. Uh, isn't any of that going against nature, going against God's nature, isn't that you or them or whatever trying to be better than or play God? I, I don't see it as that. I, th I see it as being a good steward and optimizing my potential, just making it better, taking it a step beyond. I'm doing I, I'm doing no damage to my my wasabi is not damaging my environment and it's going really well. I feel like the wasabi in the for example, because those are both two different cultivars that have adapted to situations that their ancestors or weren't used to. But with the apples, like I kind of understand where these people are coming from, like putting a tent over your orchard or whatever and refrigerating it to force two extra crops, like. That's kind of unnatural. Shouldn't the tree have time to rest? Like, what do you think? Well, apparently, you know, again, the time yeah. will show. But if the tree is, what I'm finding is, is that, is, is that I'm, I'm growing things against nature here as far as pH and, and water issues. Yeah. I'm seeing like, I'm seeing this whole thing of overcoming. Overcoming is going beyond the natural. You know what I'm saying? It's abundance is beyond the natural. Yeah. And I'm seeing that as okay as long as it's not damaging. Yeah. If the plant's not being hindered by it, it's not suffering, and it's thriving, then I'm thinking like this is good. Yeah. There's no in the apples if you're bringing in more and more nutrients to allow them to fruit. Yeah, right. obviously, obviously the things being supported. Yeah. You know, if it, if it, if, it, if, it, if this was harmful, the apples would just phase out. It's like uh -huh. I'm done, you know. Yeah. But if they're thriving and doing it, then this is working, yeah. and I don't see that as a negative. My dad's land is hard, sandy soil in a dry area. Would wood chips create new soil? It, it'll hold moisture. You see, sandy soil is basically a mineral content. That's what, you know, sand is small rock, which is good. The problem is, is having air and, and, and water. Well, there's plenty of air in sand. And so wood chips are going to hold water, bring in nutrients, and totally change that sandy environment. It'll, it'll, the best thing you could ever do is wood chips on sand. You'll, you'll love it. So, um, I had somebody ask me recently that they wanted to have a cabin out in the woods, a bug out location or something like that. And they wanted to be able to go there and have food already in production. Um, are there certain uh, crops or types of uh, fruits or anything like that, barring, you know, depending on wherever they're going to live? that would uh, automatically like reseed itself. Perennial. Like, you want to use perennial plants. That's what they like do. They potatoes can, they or can come, Yeah, you'll have to harvest and put back, but, uh, but uh, a lot of plants are perennials. That means they come back every year. Herbs do that, you know, so plant perennials, and then you'll have them forever. And then have a seed bank to where once you get there, you can start your annual production. You'll have the perennials to supply you until they produce them. Where do I get a SCOBY to start kombucha? Get on the internet. Everybody's got them, you know, and, and um, that's that. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing I can say. You know, um, if you if you know someone that's, that's, that's making kombucha locally, you can just get kombucha and you need a SCOBY. Kombucha itself that's not been pasteurized will produce kombucha. You don't, you don't need a SCOBY. So if you know that's making it, just get a start from them, eight ounces, and you're good to go. Uh, this person is in Las Vegas, getting a lot of hate for wanting to start a garden. I want to grow, or I wanna, I'm going to be following the vacuum method and diligent about watering to rebuild the soil. Any tips for desert gardening? Create shade, you know, grow trees. If you can't to create some shade, that would be helpful. You know, so if you can grow fruit trees, you know, that would be ideal because they'll create some shade for the plants below so they're not going to be so stressed by all that heat. Is growing moss all over the garden also a good alternative to using wood chips? Moss is not a healthy garden. Moss only grows in in in, in infertile environment. If you have a, a healthy environment, moss won't grow there. Uh, any issues with cabbage moths? Yeah, they they live here fine. They don't bother my plants because I have healthy plants and they're in wood chips. And, and when I used to, when I used to till my garden, the cabbage would maggot put my 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 broccoli out every year across the board. When I changed the wood chips, that whole pop and slap. It was awesome.
Paul, it's Luke from Manchester. I spoke with you last year over the phone and have now planted lots of fruit trees. Quick question. Are you meant to prune fruit trees on the first year? Depends on how they grew and, and their condition. You know, if they're putting on a lot of growth, you know, a little pruning is is simulating. Pruning simulates growth. And so even a little, even cutting back like a little, uh, you know, one, one, uh, one nub back, will stimulate more growth. So pruning will make the tree grow more. So it's beneficial to prune. You don't need to do a lot because there's not a lot there to prune. So just do what you can, but just, you know, sim pruning is a stimulant. Didn't you say that when you plant your trees, you always give them a little snack? Well, yeah, again, it's all adjustment. You know, and usually when you buy streets, they, they butchered them. So you got to clean bag cuts up. So you got to, you know, uh, make, it, make it nice. And so usually anything you get needs some pruning at some level. Okay. Uh, hi, Paul. Our courtyard gets very limited sunlight where only the far side gets direct sun, and most of the space is cast in shade for the entire day. What crops do you recommend in this type of environment? All brassicas love shade. You know, um, the greens, you know, arugula, um, spinach, lettuce, you know, cilantro, they'll tolerate shade. And so there's a lot of things that prefer shade. So, all again, your brassicas, kales, broccoli. All that would really like the shady, shady place. So make use of it. I remember you said that any plant or fruit you pick has 80% of the nutrients. I don't think that's what it said. I think it's metabolic properties, right? Yeah, metabolic uh, properties. Lost in 30 minutes. In, with, 10, in, 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 in 10 minutes. With your walk-in cooler, are you able to preserve some of that? I, I'm sure I do because my apples taste great, you know, all year long. I think it's more it, towards like leafy greens. Leafy greens, yeah. Like an apple can hold on to that. More stuff more than green. You'll see, like, even the if I had people, I had a guy come here, I, I gave him a stalk of celery, and in 30 minutes he was talking to me, the whole thing wilted over his arm. Celery is stiff because it was, you know, it's a green and it was up and it immediately started dying, where, where fruits have a tendency to last longer. They're just, you know, how they're made. Uh, thank you so much, Paul. You brought me to natural gardening and you brought me to God. My many love to you. I love you, your quality, and wish you well. Thank you so much. I appreciate your thank you, your gratitude, and your wonderful testimony. Um, when do you prune new trees? I prune my trees when it's convenient which is December, January. There's no garden to take care of, no lawn to mow, and all the leaves are out. So it's very convenient. <laughs> so it's just, I'm, I'm seeing more and more in life. As you get older, convenience makes more and more sense. And I'm just learning to, to do more and more things when it's convenient. Don't make it hard. <laughs> now, all summer long, though, I put trees. Like mm -hmm. in the center where all those little suckers come I don't want, I go out there in the, in the summer with my hand, rub them all off. It's like I just stroke my trees because I because those will, are never any of any benefit, so I get rid of them up front. I don't put up with those. So that happens all year long. Oh, we got a gotcha here. What about the moss in the woods? Is the soil there bad too? And what about it's moisture and shade in the moss? You know, the roots in the in the, in the rainforest. You know, it's all shade. You know, and, and so the moss is it's not growing in the in the in the wet. It's growing on branches and you know in the air. Uh, let's see. Um, have you ever heard of Climax blueberries? I haven't. Hmm. So they just bought some in South Tallahassee, Florida. You're wondering what you thought of that property or that uh Right. I've never, I've never heard of it. See, I, I live in a, you know, like one that really does well here is called um, Olympia, and it's really a good producer. But it, you know, there's so many varieties of blueberries, you know, and, and I'm sure they all have benefits. And depending on where you live, some will do better in your climate than will in mine. And so you want to talk, go around to people who have them, taste them, and and get good good information. The Bible says, "The mouth of truth, he witnesses the truth is always validated." So talk to people who raise them and you eat them, and ask questions, and then from your Information make choices. Well, not sure the thing, right? you know, he knows it. Well, if it's grown in sand, though, it can act like 
the, the different soils have so much to do with the flavor of the food. So like if it's grown here, it might taste really good, but if it's grown in sand, it might just be like yeah. gross. Sure, your your soil definitely indicates will, will in, in affect the flavor of the food. And yeah. you, you are what you eat at all levels. We have kind of caught up to live on the comments and questions, and there's nothing yet. So I'm going to do the video later about it. But do you want to tell people about your book? This is a really cool book. I just I just came across. Actually, Nick had it. It's the Wealthy Gardener by Joel, by um, John Saporic, and I'm telling you, this is this is a has such wisdom, and and I love it. he takes all these principles. He's teaching you know how to become wealthy. And he uses the garden for examples, and he uses and this is such a really good book. And how the book came in, into being was the man who wrote it. Um, his wife was coming home one day, and some young man went across was drunk, went across the center by her, hit her, and killed her. She was dead. And he was really having a struggle with bitterness and unforgiveness. And he felt, this has taken me out and I've got to change this. So he went to the reformatory and started mentoring, giving, putting into this kid's life. And it really helped him. And over time, the kid finally came out and became a real successful realtor. But this book is pretty much all about these lessons he taught. And, and when he went, went to the other reformatory was coming to, these lessons he taught during those times he was teaching this kid in the reformatory. And it's just really, but it's just, there's such wisdom in this book. It's really, really beneficial. I'm thinking for homeschool families, this would be a great resource, tremendous resource for training your kids because it really speaks about all kinds of issues about life. It's more about life than just, well, it's just about how to live. And it's really good. You can get it on Amazon. It's a nice little reflection. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. In regards to chickens, do you have diatomaceous earth uh, food grade or wood ashes to keep them mite free or as a preventative for healthy chickens? Wood ash works great. I have a wood stove and I got wood ash. They love wood ash and they know how to use it and it works great. Let's ask a few questions. I wonder if I got this one or not. Uh, sorry for repeating my question. I cannot watch the live stream. Please ask Paul my question. Paul, you are always mindful of God and nature and what you say. Oh, no. Yeah, we already did this one. Um, I'm giving up on gardening. Squirrels eat everything. Try just about everything. I'm sorry because you need to have good food. So I, you know, I'm telling you, a good dog, a good Labrador dog, outside, will solve that problem. Period. Because I, I'm speaking from experience. Since your wife is a midwife, you know the answer. Is it okay to place placenta in the garden? Want to plant a tree on top of it? Placenta is good anywhere you put it. It's even good to eat. I, you know, it sounds gross, but. Um, I remember a woman was re really had um, serious blood issue, and Carol had her eat her, eat her placenta, and it really brought her blood count up. Amazing! It was I, I was at the house when it happened. It was phenomenal how I watched it work. What can you tell us about? I don't know how to say this. Sphagnum. 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 Sphagnum moss. moss. Any experience with it? Um, it's. Um, I personally don't like it just because it dries out. When it dries out, it becomes hydrophobic and it's a pain in the butt to water. The water will bead right up and run right off of it. Mm -hmm. I like it. Doesn't, doesn't hold water. I mean, it's like, it's good for. I don't know. It's good as a. A mulch, depending on where you live. Like if you're up north or wherever there's sphagnum heat fog or whatever um then use it because it's a source that grows back and you can harvest it and create the livestock bedding and stuff like that but, but not for plants like if you it. look you look where peat bogs grow there's nothing else growing there yeah it's pretty but it's sterile 
and because of the fact that it's sterile and it's antibacterial and everything, it's incredible for bedding. So when you harvest yeah. actual sphagnum, dry it out, put it in your chicken coop or in the barn or whatever for the cows and horses all winter, then harvest that, all their manure. After then you got a good deal. Fill it up, compost it, and then that, that's incredible. But for like seed starting and putting into like as a compost for your garden or whatever, I'd probably go with like my floor over sphagnum. Just because of the watering problems you can run into. I was thinking about picking up a bunch of Christmas trees and putting them through the wood chipper because it's hard to get wood chips sent to us. Do I need to be worried if the trees have been sprayed before? No, they, they don't spray um, Christmas trees. You're fine. Christmas trees would be great, great, great wood chips. Um, I noticed on the way up here there is a few logs in the middle of the road, which means there's a couple of trees that got pulled and wind. cut up because of the wind. Is there any uh, worry about using any? trees that have been sprayed or treated or anything like that well roundup is pretty pretty nasty i don't usually don't spray trees with that but um uh i i haven't i haven't had any i, I get trees yeah i get you know chips from all kinds of tree service i've never had any problems so i don't think the, the disease the strawberries What's that? the strawberries but that that was I, who knows what was it i don't think it was uh, you know they, they bring in grass clippings and stuff all mixed in so i think it's probably in grass clippings Wrap the you know the the, the herbicide because they usually aren't spraying trees yeah. with herbicides. Do right? you have any experience with wild hogs and how to keep them away? Wild what? Hogs. No. Down south they have. I don't, hogs I, just I, I don't have wild. I don't have wild hogs. Yeah, we don't have them up here. We have got bears. Yeah. Nick says you got to shoot them. Yeah, they <laughs> really do. Just go there and base with. They shouldn't be there. Um, starting back to Eden Garden with the living fence of blackberries and rugosa roses. Mm -hmm. While I'm waiting for the wood chips, any other projects to support a large garden sized plot to get started? So while you're waiting for the wood chips, is there anything you can do? Well, grass clippings and leaves, you know, just any any good cover, straw, you know, a hay, hay, problem with hay might have seed in it, so it'll have some while the grass is coming up. But uh, any organic material, you know, to cover the ground is great. I threw about six to eight inches of wood chips in my chicken run, and that's pretty well compacted, and the chickens will not scratch or stir it up. Start, th start throwing greens in there. You know, live food. They'll, they'll, they'll start messing it up. They can, they can you know, that'll, that'll, that'll motivate them to dig. Uh, going back to the one about the people that had the garden space that was uh, shaded most of the day, anything with like reflecting light or heat that they could do? I don't know, maybe. Like put mirrors up or something. Well, yeah, or you know, or, 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 yeah, the... you know, like I, I use my tomatoes. I have you know metal sheets and that reflects heat to the back, you know, the north side of it doesn't get sun, you know, so. I have a pile of wood chips, but my dog has pooped all over it. Is it still safe to use? Of course, yeah. Just take the dog poop out. Um, oh, back to the chickens. If I go in with a pitchfork and stir it up, they start to scratch, but I have to keep stirring it up. Yeah, get, get live material like, you know, grass clippings, weeds, you know, produce. Get that in there. And they'll they'll on their own scratch it up because they're gonna they're, they they want to eat that stuff and so they'll they'll be digging digging into it. Other other thing too, you, you can take you know whole grain, take like barley and just strew out it. They'll they'll dig down deep to get the, get those seeds. That, that'll motivate them. Do you have any opinions on growing vegetables under your fruit trees? Oh, totally. <laughs> That's the best place to grow them. I'm telling you, if I, you know, if I had to do it over again, I'd have the garden in the orchard because produce grows so much better under trees than, than away from them. It's amazing. The trees grow better. It's just a real, a real, a real connection. So I'm telling people now, the first thing you want to plant in your vegetable garden, the first thing are fruit trees because your vegetables are so much better. And then when you have hot climates when you, during the summertime, when you can't grow greens in full sun, under the trees in the shade, you can. 
So it just really multiplies the volume of, of produce having the trees. It's huge difference. Big, big difference. Uh, do you travel? No. But you did travel recently. I, I've that? traveled twice in the last eight years and to the same place. So how was how was because I was supposed to come out on a tour that yeah day. I went this, this, I had my vacation I, I went scheduled to my, for it and somebody decided to go to New in Hampshire oxygen tank New Hampshire an oxygen tank yeah I have a friend in New Hampshire who has a hyperbaric chamber and he's really feels that like he, he really wants to help me and he's seen this thing help so many people and so um, eight years ago I went there once and I just went there this this winter and it was just really great being with him and again i saw major major things happen when people get well i saw a dog with tumors it was dead, it was dead come back to life completely well tumors you know ruptured and healed it was awesome but um it's not seeming to help my leg condition but it's okay it was a good trip and i enjoyed being there that's the only two places i've, I've gone anywhere in the last um eight years <laughs> Um, well, what about uh, getting using maggots or mealworms on the chickens or to feed the chickens to help them break up? Fine, yeah. Any, any any material that will cause them to, to, to dig to get down to the ground to get more, like I say, you know, you can throw, like I say, grain will really work great. They'll, they'll excavate that amazing to get all those little um, you know, grain, grain seeds. I live in a semi-tropical uh, zone, I guess. When it rains, thousands of fungus come up on the chips, but as it dries, it turns into a three to four inch crust. Should I break the crust up or just leave it alone? Either, you could do either. <laughs> Depending on how, how you want to use the space, if you want to use the space to grow things, you want to break it up. If you, if you don't want to do anything, it'll it, it eventually break up on its own by composting. If you do not have chickens, can you bury fruit scraps directly into the garden? You can, but when you bury stuff in the garden, I wouldn't bury it, I'd lay it on top, because when you bury stuff, you, you really tie up nitrogen to, to break the stuff down in the soil. If you look in nature, nothing's ever buried. It's always <laughs> laid on top of the soil. And so all that stuff, just throw it out in your garden. And if you don't like looking at it, then put wood chips over the top of it and bury it. You have wood chips. But again, I never would dig anything into the soil. Um... Is there direct contact information for Carol? Uh, calling the same number you called for Paul. No, Carol. Carol has a Carol. Has, if you go to the website, look up Carol Gauci. She has a web. She has a web page. You can access her on the on the internet. Yeah, she has Facebook. She has web page too. Um, mm -hmm. It's about for midwifery. Classical midwifery or gentlebirths.com. Gentle or something like that. Uh, we'll try to find a, a link somewhere. Also, um, I know she has YouTube. I think she does have a YouTube, but I've, I watched a couple of videos on there for oh, really? yeah. Maybe somebody has one for her, but I think she has one. Or she'll post YouTube videos. I think she, she'll post them on her website for people to watch because mm -hmm. they were, oh, they were yeah. good. Either. We'll try to find you some. Yeah. Contact them, though. Um, Turn this light on. Right, the glare. Oh, maybe that was before. That light. Oh, this is really Yeah. The word's kind of lagging out here, so that's why I was asking you. What did you mean? Uh, and I said it's kind of lagging out, so that's why I was asking you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, I live in a small lot in a subdivision about. 3,300 feet in subdivision Tucson area. Tucson, there's okay. okay. Um, water very expensive. Uh, El Po Bonsai Pines, uh, mm -hmm. four stone trees, one fruit grape, one lemongrass, aloe vera, grass, windy. No grass, windy. I don't know if there's a question in there. Well, oh. Freezing sometimes, lots of heat, three, four times a year. Uh, how to grow better fruit and veggies here. So very little water, a lot of heat, uh, no grass, and it's windy. 
What so can you do? Get a covering. Whatever material you have in your area, they can chip up. You know, put on the ground. You want it. You gotta cover the ground. That's why deserts become deserts. The cover is taken off. You know, it's just a, it's so simple. You got a covering. You know, every living organism has a covering. When you take covering off of something, it dies. Um, also, covering in a deserty, rocky kind of area could be rocks too, right? Rocks, rocks make a great cover. With the... Yeah, rocks make a great cover. And rocks release minerals. Rocks are really good for the soil. In my, in my crushed rock driveway, the weeds pull so easy and they're so healthy because it's nutrient dense with the minerals. I'm new to this state. A few months ago, there was a yellow powdery substance around my property. I was told it might be pollen. Any ideas? It was pollen. Pollen, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when things pollinate, you know, we hear like our cedar trees and stuff, I mean, the whole house, I mean, your cars, everything is covered with yellow pollen. Any suggestions on spreading mushroom spores? Pull back the wood chips? Uh, how much to cover back on top of? The best time of year to spread? Well, there's, I'm sure there's plenty of information. My experience was I just took a morale mushroom and crushed it with my hand and threw it out in my orchard, and they came back. They started growing. So I don't know, you know, I'm sure there's right ways and better ways to do it, but I, I don't have a lot of experience. Do you plant only or organic or heritage? Heirlooms. Yeah, I think it would be heirlooms. Do you plant only organic or heirloom seed? or plants i feel this is the best practice what are your thoughts yes i as much as possible use heirloom you know open pollinated seed and when it comes to trees i don't care how they were grown because when they come to my place they're going to repent and grow in a good organic material so i don't i don't care how they started because um so I'm, i don't make that big of an issue but ideally growing in an organic environment would be the would be the best but once they come here they're going to be in an organic environment so they're going to be, be good <laughs> Here in Italy, where I live, wood chips are expensive. Would you recommend cover crops? If so, what types of cover crops to grow in the orchard? Thank you. Want to talk about cover crops in the orchard? Um, there's so many different types, and it all depends on their location. Like Italy. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I've never been to Italy, so I've never grown in Italy. So I don't know what. Well, you know, like like just, you know, clover. Clovers are low growing. They're nitrogen fixing. You know. Um, but it's a perennial, and if you ever want to plant vegetables, it's a pain to get rid, get rid of. of. Yeah. So I do stuff that would grow for the season, Annuals. and then you can take a scythe and cut it back and mulch, or you can continually build your soil. Clover doesn't really build the soil as much as other cover crops do. Things of nitrogen, but it's the other ones do too while they build the soil. I live in Wisconsin and have a backyard and garden. I'm having problems with ants in the wood chips. Not sure if it matters if there's ants in the wood chips. It doesn't. Ants aren't hurting anything. If you look at they're not they're not they're eating any plant, they're just present. They're really no uh, no damage. It's just an aesthetic thing to you. And so just um don't don't worry about it. They're fine. I thought that's all the ants ate was plants. On, on my trees, uh, you know you know my, my climbing up and down my apple trees, they don't bother me anymore. Got it. Does Paul think it's a good idea to grow microgreens in compost wood chips inside a microgreen tray? Here's a microgreen guy. I probably would, just because there is still going to, well, if you're doing it inside, one, you're bringing foreign material from outside inside to a sterile environment, so you're going to get mold and like fungus start growing inside, and that's going to contaminate your microgreens, so I wouldn't. Plus, you've got parts of wood chips, and you cut the microgreens. You've got to be close to the soil level in your tray, so it's just going to be—it'll be messy. No. When you speak of greening of citrus trees, better to burn, not chip, and stop spreading. What what kind of greening of citrus trees? Greening of citrus trees is it better to burn and not chip to stop spreading? I don't know, Sheena, I need more info on that. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Well, if you got a disease issue, burning sure solves it. And that, that really, that totally takes care of this, the, the disease issue. So burning is effective. Oh, I think they might have been talking about somebody else. They might have been answering somebody else's thing earlier. Uh, hey, Paul, uh, did you manage to look up Kim Loud, the healer from Washington? You know, I don't know. Uh, um, there's a somebody he will call me and tell me that I lose track of, of all the people I've, I've got I've contacted doctors I'm not I'm not sure I'm sorry people are always mentioning out here you should try this method ask Paul if he's done this ask Paul to watch this video and talk to this guy about how to heal help fix whatever is ails you you've done it all right as much as yeah a lot I've done a lot and I, and I this has been going on for for um thirty um let's see forty years now. In forty years, I've been uh, have, have been affected by this, and so it's not, not like you know. And I've been to multiple docs and chiropractors, and just like this is across the board everywhere, and no one has been able to do anything. Well, they're suggesting this Tim Loud guy, and he's a healer from Washington. And apparently, he does wonders. Uh, also, my or in my garden, whenever it rains, tons of mushrooms pop up out of the wood chips. Is this a good thing? Yeah. So, in the you know, mushrooms are the flowers of fungi. Basically, they're they're, they're fungi flowers. So, basically, saying, fungi is here. It's good, you know. And, and um, if if they bother you, just 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 knock them over. Let them, let them compost, you know. Um, but they're not going to hurt anything. I mean, they're just a good indicator. You have a fun, a good fungal environment. And breaking down all the wood chips yeah, that are there. Right. That's what they do. That's their process of you know turning those witches back into the soil. Uh, okay, back to microgreens. So, what would be best to grow microgreens inside in a microgreen tray indoors? I'm, just, I'm telling them how to message. Me. Okay. Hey, follows me on Instagram. Get a hold of Nick on that on Instagram and message him, and he'll talk to you about microgreens all you want. Um, greening is a bug that burrows in and prevents nutrients from getting to fruit, so it is deformed and bitter. Yes, uh, burning it would be a great solution. Um, let's see, how old was Paul when he moved to Washington? I was uh, 30 years old. Hi right, guys, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes here to ask some more questions, and if not, we're gonna bounce. Paul, for the pinhole glasses, is there a particular place to buy it from, or can I buy it from any online? A any online or Amazon? I think they're all the same. They're not. <laughs> not, a lot, not a lot of variety. <laughs> How many garden tools does Paul have? I I have a rake and asparagus knife. I have a flat shovel for moving um, wood chips to the wheelbarrow. But that's pretty much you it. You have a wheelbarrow. I have a wheelbarrow. But that's you it. You printing, sawing, printing, printing. Um, uh, uh, printer, printer, yeah. Yeah, hand printers. A rake. A rake. That's what I do mo almost everything with. The rake is the most commonly used tool. It's so nice. Who about it, right? It's, it is it. You don't use like any picks or No, I have, nothing, or... I have nothing to pick. Nothing's hard. I don't have a, I don't need a hole because the rake does it. Right. The rake does it much nicer. That's about it. Um, asparagus knife is a great weeding tool. Get down under the root and get everything up. It's just, and you don't move my stir. It's very easy to work with. Do you use an asparagus knife for asparagus? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> my asparagus is growing witches and I can reach down and break it off with my hand at the crown. So I don't need a knife. When planting among your trees, would you have to move the mulch aside to plant? Depending on what you're planting, and depending on the condition of the mulch, if the mulch is broken down, you can plant right in it. If it's really coarse, and you make small seed, you have to pull it aside. When it's come to potatoes, you just pull the witches back and put the potato on cover cover over. You know, so depending on what you're growing depends on how you need to prepare the space to plant it, whatever you're planting in. Can you use fresh wood chips on the ground if you don't have composted wood chips? Of course, if you look in nature. Which is fall fresh every fall <laughs> on the ground and do well. 
Does Paul celebrate his birthday? And if so, when is it? I, I, you know, people celebrate it for me. It's no big deal to me, but usually my, my wife will take me out to dinner. My family come over. It's December 16. I was born 1949, December 16. Pretty close to Christmas, which is a bummer when you're a kid because everybody, you know, forgets your birthday because it's Christmas time, but it's okay. You know, you, you, li you, li you live through it. <laughs> so would you be opposed to receiving like 10,000 birthday cards on December 16th for your birthday every year. I wouldn't be opposed, but it's, it would be excessive, but, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for your thought. I know we did something like that once. Um, and on my 50th, on my, and stuff. And my 50th birthday, they did a really, uh, a, a big party at my house and someone gave me a bicycle. And it was just, I was like, a lot of people showed up, you know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was really, really I, well, Carol did that, you know, it was really nice. I want to plant. I want to plant some plum trees. How far apart should they be? Plums, I would go minimum if they're semi. If they're dwarf trees, that's that's critical. There's there's dwarf, there's semi dwarf, and there's standard. All meaning different spaces. Dwarf trees, eighteen feet minimum. If semi dwarf, I'd go like twenty five. Standard, maybe maybe already because they're going to get huge. And that's that's the challenge you have with good soil, is that the people growing them never planted in good soil so they tell you to plant them a lot closer but i'm just telling you dwarf trees planted 10 12 feet, feet apart will never make it look get too tight so you've got to i would go wider than shorter because when they get big you don't want them smashed together you don't want to have to remove them so give yourself plenty of room when beginning back to the garden why don't you recommend tilling just the very first time i've been very inspired by your testimony here's why in the soil you have hundreds of living organisms who all have their homes, have their babies, and live there. When you till, you completely disrupt and destroy that healthy environment. It's the most toxic thing you could do to soil. It's like something coming into your house and just tearing it to shreds and say, oh, your house isn't good, so we're going to make it nicer. Well, in the meantime, it's still a house. It's working. You can improve it over time with remodeling, but don't just shred it, tear it down, because then I have no house. What are your thoughts on epidemics of sudden oak death and the pathogens in general? Why do you think it's so rampant? I don't know what it is. I don't know. What it is. I don't know what it is. I'm not familiar with it. Have you heard about the Japanese farmer? Uh, what was this? Asanobi? Yes, he wrote the book One Star Revolution. I'm I'm aware of him. He's an awesome guy. What do you think about One Star Revolution? I think it's great. He gets it. It's all about covering. And if you go back to what he's saying, it's all about covering. He uses straw because that's what he had. But it's all about covering, and he totally gets it. Would it be possible to graft in a fruit tree in the middle of the summer, like a branch you cut in July and graft in immediately? It might be possible. I question whether it would survive because it's going to dry out too quick. You see, the, the foliage is pulling moisture out of the wood, and there's nothing there. Because when you, you cut it off, it's separate. And so there's, I, think, I, think, I, I doubt it would survive. You need to do, do it in a dormant state, you know, or just Be stress. Stress, yeah. I don't think it would make it. Yeah. On the other hand, you can take, you know, shoots, you know, and, and stick in the ground and get willow bark, you know, and make tea out of it and, and try to encourage root development coming off the stem. And that might work. You might, you know, leaves will fall off, but um, I've done it with figs. Figs, figs propagate that way. And so, uh, but grafting, I think, is real critical to do dur during the dormant season. Or just as the, or just as the sap's coming back in, you can plug in, but um, not during the not during the summer when it's fully. I think this next guy here messed up just a little bit. New gardener, cut and chipped apple tree, tilled chips into soil. Will bare garden dirt be ready to plant in spring? I kind of feel like that's a troll. <laughs> <laughs> But let's say it's not. Yeah. What if somebody did that? Your your, your soil is going to be highly stressed in spring because uh -huh. it's trying to break up all that stuff you put into it, and your plants will be yellow big time. They're so not. what would uh, what could you do to fix that? You think you it? plant in it and you get on top of the soil blood meal, some more good organic material to feed the soil and bring in the nitrogen because it's going to be really stressed, and so you're going to have to supplement. You know, fish emulsion, uh, blood meal, some good nitrogen pro product 
put nitrogen back in the soil because you stress it big time. And start that right now because yeah. it's, it's, the no, ground is depleted, not. you know, and, and while it's just breaking down, it's going to be depleted. Also, what about putting like your you guys are saying like the the greens on top of yeah, it right that, now? That, that's well, that's going to put nitrogen. Yeah. Let's see. Hi, Paul. What do you recommend for uh, seed companies, nursery companies, and varieties of chicken and place to purchase chicks? So, seed companies. Seed companies is um, Fedco and Johnny's Seeds. They're both in Maine. Those are really good seed companies. Nurseries. Nurseries, I don't know nurseries um, because they're all over the world in different places and where you live is local and I don't, I'm don't, i not there kind of a thing. But for you, it would be um, Burnt Ridge. Burnt Ridge is right here in Washington State. Burnt Ridge is really great for um, um, for trees and berries and stuff. And varieties of chickens and places to purchase chickens. The varieties of chickens is depending on what you want, but the best place to purchase them is Murray, 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 Murray Hatchery in Iowa. And if you call them, they'll send you a catalog. The catalog is amazing. They have the most incredible variety of chickens. They'll give you descriptions. And they're really, a, that, that catalog is a great source to determine what you want because they tell you everything. And that was Murray McMurray. Murray McMurray Hatchery. And it's a family-run business for over almost 100 years now. And what I love about them, if you don't want to vaccinate your chickens, they won't, they won't, you can choose not to, and they won't vaccinate them, which is awesome. Did you do a video about colloidal silver? With colloidal silver. Um, did you ever do that? I don't think we did. Uh, somebody asked me to do one. With Maybe that I did. I might have done it. I, I, I think I think someone someone someone's done it. I can't remember who, but I think I've done it. On Maybe a video. you did a video to send to my mom that one time, but I don't. I don't okay. think I ever posted anything. Uh, I think I saw something on your thing with with doing it. I'm not sure about really? it. And I know that we've seen the kombucha on yours. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, December 16th, folks, let's get some reminders to send full card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how often do you do live chats? I do them very rarely, but Nick does them about once a month on his channel. Um, I've heard Paul talk, speak about not going to. Okay, so um, they pretty talk about not vaccinating and doing homeschool, two separate topics. Do you have any uh, more information on, say, anti-vaccine or doing homeschool? Carol, Carol, if you get a hold of Carol, she's got all kinds of video. I mean, the stuff is, it, the information is totally rampant now. Vaccines are toxic, period, period. You know, and uh, the homeschooling. My sense is is that the whole pro the whole process of schooling is spoken of in the Bible, in in the first chapter of Psalms, and it says, "Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of God." That's public school. Or sits and see the school. That's higher education. And it's basically saying, "Don't go there. It's not beneficial." But instead, if you go into God's word and you meditate that His results, you'll be tree planted by the rivers of water that bears fruit his his fruit in season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does will prosper. I'm telling you, God's word is the most amazing source for education. There's nothing it doesn't encounter, and by adhering to it, you're going to succeed. And I'll give you a, a classic example. The Jewish culture has, from the beginning of time, been successful across the board, no question. They're the most successful culture in the world, and there's a reason for that. They have the Torah, God's word, and they abide by that in their culture. And every Shabbat, every Sabbath, the Jewish family gets together. The husband blesses his wife. She blesses her husband. They bless their children. And being ex exposed to a blessing every week impacts your future huge. And then they have the Torah as a background. How to, how to eat, how to you know, take care of yourself. Good basic principles in life. And they're just successful because of their culture. Which all all comes back to God's word. Any topics on uh, homeschooling? Homeschooling is like I say. Homeschooling is the simplest thing you can do. You just take your kids everywhere you go. You have to do everything with you. You talk them through it. It's easy. It's not hard, you know. And my my kids, my son, so loved going to 
you know, they didn't go to work with these people. All these poor kids at the bus stop waiting to go on this funky bus and sitting and just going, out, going out all day to be with people, to work with me, and just be in, involved in life. And, they, and all their neighbors were just jealous. You get to be happy in school? This, you, oh, you're so lucky. And my kids learned how to work. They all became successful. And it's like, it wasn't a big deal. And having a boy, especially sitting in a chair in solitary confinement all day long is cruel. It's totally evil. He was not meant for that. And it's unnatural. And he's going to resist because he's designed to be outside, big and moving, doing something, not sitting in a stupid chair all day long. <laughs> so it's just, it's unnatural. I have depleted cracked soil that I'm trying to rebuild with wood chips. And while I'm seeing a few earthworms, I want them to move fast or move in faster. What can I do to encourage them? Water. Water really speeds up the composting process. Keeping it damp really will speed up the process like nothing else. Uh, have you ever tried or have, uh, say, information about stevia? Stevia? Stevia. I've grown it, yeah. It grows, it grows, grows fine with wood chips. Do you like it? Yeah, I do like it. It's nice. Better than sugar? Sure. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, how old are you now? You look younger for a mature man. Uh, the health from the plants was in your God bless you and your family and everyone. I'm 70 years old. I see ants on my newly planted bare root apple trees. No problem. The ants won't hurt the trees. Not Stevie. Uh, I put in four inch layer of wood chips over parts of my lawn in the fall. Can I grow annuals in the spring if I put in a thin layer of compost on top of it? Any better way to do it? I think four inches of wood chips in the fall, the grass will grow through it this spring. So you need to, you may need to in, you, it, raise the grade, put more wood chips in, and then um. Dig down like in the summer when you start coming into the grass, big dead, good soil, plant in it. But I, I have a sense if you only did four inches, come spring, the grass is going to come shoot through the same cloth. Thanks for feeding me. That was really great. <laughs> now, on the other hand, if you want a nice green lawn, put in four inches of Not four time. inches, like you know, an inch, because the four inches is going to take a lot to yeah. come through, but an inch of wood chips really make your lawn nice. And do it in the fall. You know, so you're not sucking up more, and then all winter long you can feed that feed that soil. Fall is the best time to do any application of anything because that's when the crater does it. Uh, when a new video with printing Paul's trees later today. <laughs> well, it will be the filming of it. When I get around to editing, it will be when it's posted. So when you bless your family, how does that work on the Sabbath? Is it as simple as a compliment, an act of service, or praying over them? All of those. And anytime, any, all, all during the day, anytime your kid does something good, compliment him, commend him. You know, affirmation is powerful. You know, and again, what, what, self-image is so built by affirmation. And so anytime you can, any day. When anybody in your family does something well, make a big deal. Thank you. That was good. You did that well. That blessed me. That's huge. Have you ever grown that trees here? I have. I have a. I have a. Um. A little. It's, it's a. Um. The coarse fruit filbert's growing fine. It's. It's. it's not, I don't have nothing to pollinate. So I don't get any fruit, but it's growing well. Could you take a graph off of that and put it in some of the Sure, you know, but you're going to have a horse fruit. It. It's not, it's not going to be, a, it, this is not something you want for producing fruit. This is like an aesthetic, really cool looking tree, but it's not something for doing doing nuts because it's just it's a horse fruit. <laughs> oh. 
current current bush, would it be possible to do a video about it? Well, mine are all done, but I prune the current bushes just like I do everything else. It's it's really all the same. We can, you know, maybe if he goes out there, you can take a picture of it. And you can, you know, yeah. close, you can well, we have the the video about pruning the blueberry bush. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Same same thing. Same thing on that. Just build a chicken run to fill the garden soil. The problem I'm having is that it's really muddy. Do you have any advice, which is Wood chips, yeah, solve my issues. Uh, so just what throw some wood chips yeah, in there. Get, get a cover. Yeah, put the, put the wood chips out or you'll you won't have mud. And the chickens will you know work through it. Have you ever heard of wood chips being tainted with whatever herbicide they use to kill the trees that usually makes a small neck with an axe and spray a little bit of this pest? Oh. But um, herbicides and herbicides are not that. usually used on trees. It's not not their you know, not the, the application is more on you know ground cover stuff. But if you're getting leaves or like um, grass clippings from neighbors or something, yeah, that could be a challenge because you know two four D that's Agent Orange. That's what they use for that's, that's what kills the broadleaf and lawns. That will kill everything. That's bad news. What about whitewash to prevent sunburn? I on trees, people. I've never, I've never um, painted my trees anything, and and um, they're good. Again, look in nature. No one whitewashes anything in nature, and the trees, the trees do well. They're not sunburned. How can I deal with thistles and stinging nettle? Dig the root out and make the teeth. Yeah, you got to get those roots out because they're very invasive. And um, but you know, with that kind of thing, though, I don't you be overwhelmed with the whole thing. Do one day at a time. Do a thorough job and just move slowly. You'll eventually get it. When I came here, my whole field was covered with thistles. We're talking thick in there. It took me years, but I got them all. And I just took out three this year that showed up because I'm not going to put up with it. So just tenacity, diligence, always wins. And if it's in a spot you want to do a garden, just run chickens through it. Let them scratch through it until there's nothing there. And then all that manure will put a lot of nitrogen into the soil, and this one really doesn't like high nitrogen. So, so. Yeah, chickens are the best for preparing soil. They, they just do their best job. <laughs> the little feet, man, just has perfect cultivators, and they get everything out, and they eat everything. <laughs> Is Paul still drinking kombucha? I drink kombucha that I make. I make it every two weeks myself. I've been doing it for, I think, almost 30 years now. How productive are wood chips that have almost no leaves? I live in Connecticut, and I just had wood chips delivered to my home. The leaves are ideal. That's, that's, that's the, um, you know, but if they're done in the dormant season, it's still okay. But ideally, the more leaf content, the, the better the better quality of the wood chips are. The, the more leaves, the better. But without them, just use what you can. Use whatever you have, but ideally, the higher leaf content, better quality. Use grass with the leaves. Yeah, or leaves. Or, 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 or when people rake up leaves, just put yeah. you know, fresh leaves down. Add to it. What are your opinions on greenhouses? Greenhouses are unnatural. You take out um, well, let's just give you an example of the test they did. In a sun-ripened tomato, there's 300 phytochemicals. In a greenhouse tomato, there's 50. 250 were lost with light going through glassy because it interrupts photosynthesis. Produce growing in greenhouses is really deplete in nutrient density. Yeah. When it's growing at full light, when you're yeah. starting to eat. It's great for, and then you move them outside. Yeah, it's yeah. great for starting things, but for their whole life in a greenhouse, you're not going to have much nutrition. For I someone who doesn't them. like greenhouses, you have a greenhouse. Someone gave it to me as a gift, but I have no roof on it, so I'm getting direct sunlight into it. All I do is use the glass as a knock out the wind to keep it warmer. And then the wind was so unkind here recently, just blew one out and broke 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 one for me. You know, so it's it's been a challenge having a greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do grow basil, and the basil does really nice in the summertime in my greenhouse. 
So it's okay as a wind block, but yeah. you want to keep the roof off. Keep the roof so off so you get direct sunlight and rain, you know, because those things are really beneficial for plant life. Thank you for sharing all your knowledge. You have been such an inspiration to me. Thank you. Is it okay to remove leaves from the lawn and put it at the base of a tree? Yes. Or if you just, when you mow, just look, put the whole thing, the grass clippings and the leaves at the base of the tree. Let's, let the mower pick it up for you. I would like to add a shrub or some plants that would provide some shade and protection for my chickens in their run, but it needs to be less than six feet tall. Do you have any suggestions? Sunflower plants. They're, they're, they're how are they even, before they even sprout. Yeah. Yeah, if you put them on the outside of the fence. Yeah, on the outside. Because um, they do grow tall. They grow yeah. in the summertime when you need the shade. And then they seeds. And then they yeah, drop they seeds, do. and you can just throw the stalks right yeah. into there. Yeah, just plant sunflowers on the outside edge of your, of your chicken thing. Either that or I was even thinking, like, I keep feeling like willow. Like, certain willows do you can bring them into a bush. And then you can just cut them down and let them come yeah. back from the roots. Yeah. You, it, this is, you know, Okay, you have to ever, when it gets beyond six feet, just take it out and let it come back again. Yeah. And then all the willow brush and stuff, once that's composted, willow is amazing. Composted willow, since willow bark alone is a good root inhibitor, not root inhibitor. Enhancer. Yeah, promoter. Um, willow compost is incredible. When Paul planted the sequoia trees along his driveway, there might be more to that question. Okay, that's oh, maybe when did you? Oh, the trees. The trees are twenty-one years old now. I did twenty-one years ago, and they were six-inch starts, little tiny six-inch seedlings. What do Paul think of Holland and Paul like Holland greens? Holland greens are an amazing. Produce it grows really fast and just prolific and really high high water content in the stems, but it's abundant. We're talking abundant foliage. It's really good. And just in case the country, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the country? I haven't been there. I don't know. Uh, it says we are great at water control. Oh yeah, they got all those little um, oh. like aqueduct kind of. No, things, the, the, the um. All through Holland, you got those one water one rays. What are they? What are they called? Um, shoot, I don't know. I'm trying to think. There's, there's a name for them. Um, and all through Holland, they have, they have these little all these water running through everything. You know, um, irrigation. No, no, no. There's, there's a term. Um, Rob Robson, please tell us what Paul is talking about. <laughs> what are those waterways in Holland called? Uh, windmills, dikes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dikes. All through Holland is great. I didn't even know that. Good at you, Holland. Um, I would choose Placifora for chicken tents. You can eat the fruit. Passiflora, like for uh, shade for that. Yeah, I think that's what they're talking about. I don't know what it is, but. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about like grapes? You have grapes along your the chicken chickens are going to eat them. But you have Which right you along your fence over here. Yeah, they the only eat one side of it. Yeah. They, what they, they I used them. to do for like my chicken coop back home is I always had them fully enclosed. We had crazy eagle and hawk problems. Mm -hmm. um, I'd have, if the coop wasn't fully enclosed, I'd have a, almost like, a, um, like an arbor or whatever above it. And then I'd plant some kind of vine to grow up it. You can plant grapes and they're a nice woody stalk. Yep. Train it one stem and then have it branch out and cover it as a nice shade. And it's and clematis, clematis is a really nice ground cover. And yeah, flowers, clematis, that, yeah. that clematis really covers well. Uh -huh. But I used to plant lupas and all sorts of stuff so they'd hang down in the chicken coop. Even at that, you could do like uh, cucumbers oh, yeah. or some Squash squashes and or melons or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And then when they fall, is there chickens, chickens in them? <laughs> Unless they hit the chicken. Okay, yeah, poor turkey. <laughs> um, chickens are pretty quick. Yeah. Does Paul eat the meat from his poly hens? Does he eat meat at all? 
No, I, I eat meat occasionally. My wife likes it and she buys it, but I don't, I don't ever get it by myself. But I don't, I don't eat my chickens. I, yeah, I let them go to full, full, I let them go to the full maturity of dying in this I don't, I don't eat the chickens. But now Nick raises chickens and he sells chicken meat. So. What about like a uh, lamb or the sheep or? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna harvest. We have a ram out there. He's not very nice. We're gonna make him cat food. We're gonna, he's gonna become cat dog food. Yeah, cat and dog food. <laughs> Churches need to do back to Eden gardening so that when we get raptured, our unbelieving loved ones will have something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where do you get your hauling green seeds for several years? Cole's nursery no longer carries it. The only place that carried it I knew of was was um, pine tree nursery, and they don't carry it anymore. So I don't know where to get it now. Hmm. So if you have it, plant it and cut, cut your own seed. <laughs> this is getting hard to find. You know? Oh, passiflora is the plant that grows passion fruits. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, I would think. You mentioned that you add wood ash to your garden. Do you also add wood lump charcoal? I pretty much put it all my chicken pen and the chickens homogenize it into all the soil and that goes in my, my, my garden. You so take everything from your wood burning stove and you put it out there the and you also burn. Um, burn brush and stuff in, inside the chicken pen. And so all of that goes in everything. And again, the, this is all homogenized by the chickens into the compost. So it's really so well mixed, you can't find it. Since you're outside a lot, you are you concerned about sunburn, etc.? No. And I and I'm 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 a Swiss German culture. I lived in California growing up, and I sunburned all summer long, and it never 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 bothered my skin. I mean, all summer long I sunburned because I because that's a hot environment, and I have really light skin. I have wild grapes that don't get any ripe grapes ever. Is there something wrong with them? Pollination. They need to be cross pollinated. Cross pollinated with another, another grape. type of grape yeah. or just a, the same grape another, just over there? And I think another variety. Just any other variety of grape. Uh, is there grape grafting? I'm sure you could graft grapes. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of grapes are grafted. When you buy like, starts, yeah, get they're grafted. So you could probably just find somebody with a. You can have one different... vine graft multiple varieties into it. Pollinates just like the apple and pear tree. Yeah, just you know, like one leader graft something into it, so you have multiple, uh -huh. you know, varieties in the same plant. Would be nice to see Paul printing the grapevine again. Yeah, I'm sure it would. I don't live here no more. Can't get up all the time to see all those things. Uh, this kill is same family as cauliflower and cool. Don't want to know what is called in English. Yeah, it's the brassica family and it's kale. Cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, all that is brassic. And did Nick ever process his chickens? Dying to know what they taste like. Like chicken, right? Huh? Tastes like chicken? They taste so much better than just chicken. <laughs> it was like amazing. Amazing. They were great. Dear Paul, please let me know should I be concerned with source of my wood chips? I use trees grown near bushy or busy roads would it be concerned of contaminating my garden i don't think so it rains grapes have two sexes one per plant your wild grape means you need to bear fruit how do you tell if your grape is a male or a female you I just looked up this little leaf i don't or know something. <laughs> i don't know do they <laughs> Do they have to self-identify as a male or a female? <laughs> I'm glad you went there. Uh, went there. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay, well, we'll ask it. <laughs> Only it knows. Don't buy anything from Home Depot. There's a question here about from Francis. 
don't buy any plant material from Home Depot or Walmart, any of those places. They're just garbage stuff, not good quality. Not even my grafted trees that I get from the Costco's? They're butchered. If you look at how they come in there, they've all been butchered. I mean, they're all, if, you ha if that's all you can, but just they're, they're, that'd be the last place I'd get them. So I'd like support about small, like, local nurseries, too, instead of these big box stores. Like, if you have the option, if all you've got is some people in Walmart, sure, whatever. But I'd support the local nurseries. What I like about the Costco ones is uh, they're grafted yeah. already. I, I can, you know, pick which one that I... Uh -huh. That I want, and it, for some reason, even if I kill it, you just take it back to them, and they're like <laughs> yeah. here. They're great for and replace. then they just yeah. Costco, Costco's nice. Good. Costco's is a is a nice company, irregardless of their products. Yeah. Some of their products, they're a great company. Um, I have a lot of cedar hedging that I plan on removing. Would you recommend chipping it for ground covering? Well, cedar is probably your, your least desirable. It does break down. It, everything does turn back to dirt, but that would be the, the least desirable. But if you, that's what you have, use it. It just would take every, all the organic material will work. It's just some will take longer, longer to yeah. work. Mm -hmm. I'd probably compost it on the side first yeah. because fresh cedar, it has a root inhibitor in yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if you look under a cedar tree or even the sequoias, there's no weeds growing. Right. There's there's some under my I think I think it's there's a couple and they adapt to that environment, mm -hmm. but for a vegetable, it's not gonna like no. it. So compost it and then use it because it'll be fine, it'll be neutralized. What is Paul's favorite vegetable to eat? When they're fresh in season, they're all favorite. You know, it's just I mean, it's like you just you know, you bite in you know, like like we were out there and the, the snow covered ground, I took up some parsley under the snow, it was just delicious, it was amazing, you know. Again, all my vegetables are good. And it's just again in season, they just are the are the best. Paul, oh, can you plant tomato in the greenhouse every year? Don't plant tomatoes in the greenhouse. I, I, you can start in there, but get them out when you want tomatoes because they should be in full sun. It tastes much better than they're there for you. Does kale help? Cancer. Yes, kale. Kale is powerful. It has, it has um, a chemical in it or a product of a component that actually goes into the cell and eats out free radicals. It's an amazing cancer um, killer. Kale is an amazing food. Really, really good for you. See, antioxidants will, will take out free radicals to cause cancer, but once they penetrate the cell wall, antioxidants can't penetrate the cell walls. The kale does. It actually goes into the cell wall, goes into the cell, and eats out consumes the radical. It is really, really powerful food. Um, oh, Donald. Uh, I went to your house, didn't I, Donald? I think so. A few years ago, I did a video. It's raining over here in Tri Cities. The gardens are soaking up. I'm glad the wood chips will keep the moisture. And no mud. It's so great no not mud. having mud. <laughs> Uh, any prophetic word given to Paul for us? Well, just, you know, um, the thing that I'm seeing, you know, more is in the word, and this is, Paul, you know, Paul writes, it's, it's required of a steward that he, he be found faithful. I think it's really important for us to be good stewards, to be faithful with what resources we have and make the best use. And I think that really pleases God, being good stewards. You know, so at whatever level, in your workplace, in your family, in your home, in your garden, whatever, just be a good steward. Do it well. And that pleases, pleases God. Do you or Carol sprout seeds like broccoli, radish, peas for eating or feeding your chickens, especially through the winter? We do it. We do it to eat. We, we, we use sprouts are really good for you. And we, we do a lot of sprouts and salad for good, for good food. Where do you do sprouts at? Right in the kitchen. There's a window there, and just you know, you, uh, 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 the easiest way is just get a, a you know a cookie tray, put you know, um, um, paper towel down, wet it, put seed on top, and they, they start growing. They sprout. Uh, I live in Texas, Texas suburbs, and we do not have chickens as my 
processing plant. Should I have used the... Talk to Nick. He lived in a place they wouldn't let him have chickens, and he had, and he got chickens. He changed the law. He <laughs> got the law changed. Oh, yeah. They're they're saying should I just use earthworms since they don't have chickens to process all their organic? Yeah, if you have, if you have access to earthworms, they're wonderful. I mean, they produce castings, which is the finest fruit on the planet. So earthworms are great. You can set up a small vermicompost bin, like right under your kitchen cabinet or whatever, in a small storage bin. Few thousand red liquid worms, we can compost everything in that little bin. What other plants help with cancer? Good or again, it's, it's basically cancer cannot live in an alkaline environment. This is really simple. If you alkalinize your body, cancer will die. It can't live there. And if you look at human culture, and even, even in our time today, in, in unindustrialized areas, because the food is eaten, you know, as they grew it. But all processed food is acid forming, all of it. And that's what causes the environment the cancer grows in. And it's so, the cure is so simple. Simple. Just eat well. Fresh live food in season, you can't have cancer. It can't exist. Thanks for the info. For sure, cover crops, no till, built a roller crimper. Repairing heavy tilled soil on five acres. Hmm. Cool. Love this. Wish there were more videos. Uh, for winter gardening, growing wood, you recommend under some material, a tunnel. We have negative temperatures and freezing winds. But little to no snow cover. And need a garden need suggestions. So, Nick. I don't understand the question. Yeah. What I think, well, I think to keep the wind away from, like, let's say you're in Alaska or something like that. Yeah, cold winds always constantly like, blowing along. Yeah. And you still want to be able to grow some food, so you dig out trench, put a tunnel cover like that. How would you dig it out? Just like a small caterpillar tunnel or like a small little hoop house or something. I mean, yeah, growing these kind of things under in a greenhouse condition, they might not be great, but they're better than nothing. nothing. So, it's, but if you can get under the frost line, though, that's why I think that they yeah, dig in the tunnel out to yeah. get below the frost line. So yeah. now the temperature of the ground is a warm. constant warmness. 45 degrees. Yeah. And then put a tunnel over it for the light. There was a guy, I forget where he was, but he did a greenhouse like kind of on the side of the hill and he buried these pipes like geothermal. Yeah, kind like of a, these big yeah. like 12 inch pipes like 50 feet into the hill. And then put a fan that circulates air through the hill, mm -hmm. and it pulled all that warm air from the winter and heated his greenhouse all winter. And he did his house. Yeah, he had um, like citrus and everything growing in there, and he oh, was like awesome. in some freezing climate. And he dug down too on that. He did, yeah, yeah. And then they built a greenhouse or something Kinda on like top a, of it. It's like a lean to. Yeah, he dug into the mountain. Yeah. Okay, you see the ground temperature is you know, forty-five degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which should be. Freezing climate, that's that's warm. Pretty warm, yeah. 45 is ideal for like lettuces and stuff like that. Now, in that situation, you're promoting doing a greenhouse, which is still bad. It's the best you can do. You, you know, you, you have no option. So it's, it's not bad. It's, it's just, just depleted. It's just, it's just, it's just, you don't have the nutrients you wouldn't pull sun. Yeah, it's not going to hurt you. It's just less than. Yeah. Okay. What does Paul think about electric cars? Oh, they're quiet and nice. And, um, you got a good charge, you know, I guess a good place to charge them. You don't have to go far. They're great. Yeah. They won't replace my truck, though. Uh, <laughs> your truck's awesome. My truck does, it does a, just a lot of good hard work that an electric car won't do. <laughs> All about your battery. Oh, my battery. 
it's such a it's it's you know I bought a lifetime warranty battery back in 1977 from JC Penney's. This is 1977. This is a while ago. So over the years, it's been a real interesting process in getting them to um, replace uh -huh. it. You know, because they don't make the battery anymore. So they were having me go to part stores and get them. With their, the, you know, so now JC Penney's has given up the liability to Firestone Tire Company, and so mm -hmm. I had to call them, and they says what. How many times could you hold a minute while I because they just have never encountered this before, you know? And I'm still in the process now of we've got a case, a case in, and they're trying to process this. But you have what? Yes, and you have the liability from JC Penney's, and you're required because I have the truck and I'm still alive to replace my battery. And I need $169 because that's what it costs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've been trying to grow kale here so many times. I cannot seem to get it to grow. Any suggestions for Tri Cities? You know what? I have two kale plants that refuse to die, and I planted them. Uh, I had a buddy over, and I had a bunch of kale seeds left over from like five years ago when I got some from Paul. And I was telling this guy that when I went to Paul's house one time to do uh, a video, he was telling me about carrots and planting carrot seeds by putting the carrot seeds in his hand and just throwing them on the ground under a tree. And a month later, I came back and there were carrots. And so I had these kale seeds and I just threw them on top of the wood chips out in the, the edge of the garden pasture. and. I have two kill plants from that that refuse to die. So I don't know. Just throw it out there and add some water. Again, in nature, no one plants seeds. They just blow in. Seeds just blow in and they grow. What is Paul? Um, oh, somebody bought two of your two of the movies uh, for retiring friends. Rob, Rob's asking about, if you look at the Latin culture, they're incredibly passionate. There's a lot of passionate cultures in the world. This is not just um, uh, the country you're saying, that, Netherlands. There's there's way more passionate cultures in the, the Netherlands. You know, the, 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 like the Latins, they're incredibly passionate. Um, black folk are really pa passionate. <laughs> um. Is is it passion or pension? Is there a plant or something? Oh, pension. I'm sorry. Pension. Is there a? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it could have been passion and just misspelled. Okay. Know. Um. Well, in Rob, in, in America, in America, they have Social Security, but you pay into it all your working life. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe not. I'll have to get Rob to clarify what he's talking about there. Um. Yeah, that's what he's saying. I'm asking if Paul want to retire someday. No, I don't believe in retirement. Because if you look at scripture, you know, Moses was 120 years old and so functional. You know, the whole idea of retiring is you basically just fold up and die. Wow. Give up. I mean, as long as I'm moving, I should be functional. You know, so and as you, you see nothing in scripture ever relating to retirement. It says in your old age, you bear more fruit. And you know what's so pathetic in culture is that in most cultures in the world, Elders are looked at as really honored and honorable, and they look at them as advisors for wisdom because they have it. It took a while to get there. We're in our culture that put in rest homes, become couch potatoes, and totally not used. It's such a wasted resource. Older people are a great resource. Use them. Put them to work. Get, get their wisdom. Get their understanding. Make them feel useful. And it's just so stupid. Our culture is all about retiring. Like, are you kidding me? This is... It's not, not real, you know. Just learning about back eating garden. Live in no one's in Missouri. Zone, zone five or six. Is it too late now to prepare for a spring back to eating garden? What should I do now to get the ball rolling? Just what you do in the fall, you're just a little late, but just anytime you start is good. It's just it's just you'll have to wait for it to, the seasons to come in, but you can't turn the clock back. There's no and there's no reason not to not to start. So just go for it. What part of the tree is used for grafting the new tree? 
the, the, the only part of the live part of the tree is a cambium layer, that little green part below the bark. That has to come in contact with each with either the tree and the graft. The center part is not living, it's there for support, but it's not live. The only live part is a cambium layer, and that has to be in contact one with another for any life to be transferred. So if you have a new tree, brand new year one tree, and you want to take a graft from another tree and put it into this smaller tree, what part of the bigger, older tree would you use for the graft? So it has to be the same. Okay, diameter, if, you, if, right? if you want to maintain this, the, the tree, then you have to have a side branch coming off and graft into it. If you cut the main tree and plug into it, then that tree just stop there and your graft now becomes a reality. But you want to keep it this diameter to this diameter. Yeah, whatever you're so grafting in. The end tip, if you're going in a brand new tree, it'd probably be like something like this. Or even smaller. Or smaller. smaller. Yeah. So you want to probably, from that bigger tree. The size doesn't matter. Just make, make, make sure they're the same diameter. At some point, they become too small to work with or too big to work with. Okay. But it, but there's a huge like the size of the pencils is ideal, yeah, it. is ideal. So it, it's just so easy to, to to work with. Earth Earth Ship House. That's right. Nice. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about your backyard apple freezer? Is it just for storing apples? What temperature do you keep it there? It's not a freezer. It's a cooler. It's a walk-in cooler. And I keep it cooler than, than normal because there's, a bunch, there's big fans that keep the air moving side, so I can keep it below freezing. So I keep like, you know, 24 degrees, you know, and um, I keep it like 24, 28, and, and it's just a thermostat maintains it, and it's that's, that's great. And Apple Store for a really good time, good long time in there. We are moving to a new home in the foothills of Virginia. Get out now. Uh, and I want to get our Eden Garden going as fast as we can. What's your best suggestion? Well, find a space you want to grow food in, put a cover on it. Come spring, pull the cover back, start planting the soil, and just go for it. And just keep in, in you know, over time, just keep improving and developing your space. You know, plant fruit trees February. That's next month. They'll be coming into 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 the um, nurseries. So start planting fruit trees, and then the, underneath the fruit trees, start growing your garden. Hello, Paul. It's Rhonda from Norway. Oh, hi, Rhonda. Um, my experiment, or my ex experience, maybe in the garden is that sometimes the crop does better than the year before. I think it's in the weather. Hello from Spain. Paul, do you think that one of the causes of Alzheimer's disease is retirement? i.e. disengaging our bodies and minds causing atrophy of the brain. I'm sure whatever, again, the old adage, if you don't use it, you lose it, is true at all levels. I also think nutrition has a lot to do with um, Alzheimer's. If you look at, if you look at um, India, which is a classic demonstration, India has a huge population of poor people, and not well off. But the, the percentage of dementia and Alzheimer's in, in um, India is less than one percent. The reason is they're eating turmeric every day in their in their in their curry. Turmeric is really good for the brain. So I think both with use and nutrition is the issue with Alzheimer's. And so the best way to clear your get your mind functional is memorize scripture. Because the Bible says it renews your mind. And I have classic when I wiped out my brain through some drugs, I memorized the scripture, I got it back again. And so utilizing the brain and eating well is your best preventative against Alzheimer's. Or dimension. All right, guys. Well, the sun's out and stopped raining, and it's been over two hours doing this. So I think we're, we're going to bail. <laughs> <laughs> so say your goodbyes to Paul. Bye. And uh, we'll get a printing video up here pretty soon. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. You know what, guys? I I was videoing this, so I will probably post uh, that as well soonish, uh, so you can uh, maybe have a clearer video and clearer audio. 
that's all I have to say about that. Bye.